correlation. It's a funny thing, especially if you leave out, if you leave out the relevance component. According to these correlation data, Bozeman's population growth is actually causing global warming. <laughs> or is it the other way around, that global warming are causing people to move to Bozeman? Something to ponder. <laughs> I'm Thomas. I founded the Medical Prognosis Institute Labs in Denmark and in the US. And when I'm not working on matching patients with cancer drugs, I try to spend as much time being a fly fisherman here in Bozeman. Soon I expect to structure my day so that mornings can be spent in my lab and the afternoons spent on chasing a hatch on the local rivers. What I want to share with you today is how successful fly fishing and effective cancer treatment is. Same, same, but different. And in order for you to be successful within these two very different fields of activity, besides a little bit of luck and a lot of practice, you need to be good at correlation, relevance, and pattern recognition. When I started fly fishing, I ran into what I called the fly fisherman's dilemma. <laughs> I asked myself, is there a way to figure out which fly to tie on that will help me catch not just any fish, but the kind of fish I actually want to catch that day? It was a real exasperating experience. But luckily, I discovered that there's actually a rational way to decipher this, and it's called matching the hatch. I think of it as the science behind the art of fly fishing. Matching the hatch is really about recognizing the growth pattern of insects, also known as fish food. <laughs> it's, bringing together rele it's bringing together relevance between the fish you want to catch and what these fish are eating. And it works in four major steps. First, we identify the stage of the insect. What life cycle stage of the insects are the fish eating at the moment? And then we find the color and the size of that insect. And then we choose the fly with the best presentation for the setting, meaning looking at the flow of the water, the depth of, fish, the, of the feeding fish, and ask yourself, how am I going to get my fly in front of the fish in the most natural way possible? Then you tie it on and let it hunt. You fish it for a sufficient amount of time until you're sure that the fish should have eaten it by now. Maybe add or take off some weight or change the depth of the fly a few times. And if the fish still hasn't eaten the fly, it's time to pick another fly from your narrowed down relevant selection. And that is the concept of matching the hatch. In cancer treatment, there is also a dilemma, an oncologist's dilemma, in deciding which treatment will provide the highest efficacy and the least side effects. And that's because many oncologists lack the precise tools to help them decipher which drug will give the highest success. Luckily, at Medical Prognosis Institute, we have developed a novel drug response prediction system, also known as DRP, to do just that. It works like matching the hatch, but for cancer treatment. I think of it as the science and art of genetically-based cancer treatment. Where I work, we believe that cancer is personal Every cancer tumor is different, and every patient is different. And we need to empower doctors with a rational tool to provide the best personalized treatment. So, how do we do our matching the hatch for cancer treatment? It's also in four major steps, and I will be using breast cancer as the scenario. First, we sample the tumor and bring it to our DLP lab where we study all relevant genetic information on how this patient's cancer is operating. We tune in with the help of a high-resolution scanner to see what the messenger RNAs are signaling. You see, the messenger RNAs are the ones carrying all the information about how this cancer is operating, and also telling us what the cancer cells are conspiring to do and what they're doing uncontrollably. We focus on the mRNA by using, <laughs> we focus on the mRNA um, to gain correlation insight, relevant correlation insight. This is kind of like eavesdropping on a conversation to figure out the pattern of what it's all about and then decipher the relevant information. 
there are many of these messenger RNAs to consider, and it actually becomes too complex for a human brain to decipher one million genetic data points. So we use computers to gain an even higher insight and a higher resolution. The fourth step is what makes our matching the hatch for cancer treatment so effective. I call it the secret sauce. It's a novel mathematical statistical drug response prediction algorithm that allows us to plug in more complexity while still making it while still making the information understandable and usable. It's just when you think that one million genetic data points is already quite complex to analyze, we hypercomplicate this by adding even more relevant data to gain even higher resolution. Imagine an Excel spreadsheet with one million rows and one million columns, each cell representing one correlation. You would never attempt to analyze this by hand. Without computers, it would take longer time than the age of the universe to do this. Cancer is complex. So, what do we gain from this hyper-complex matching the hatch approach? Well, we provide doctors with a rational tool to help them pick the drug with the highest probability of success. We help oncologists make informed decisions about which drugs that will work and those that will be ineffective. Just as important for a fly fisher to have many different flies in the fly box for many different scenarios to help catch the big fish, cancer patients also need a wide variety of treatment options available for them. Unfortunately, due to the cost and complicated approval process, many drugs never reach the market, leaving no option for many patients that would have otherwise benefited from the treatment. Luckily, our DRP is also very useful for drug developers. We help them select the patients that will respond to their drug and also find other indications that their drugs can be utilized for. It's like a matchmaking application for drug profiles and patients' genetic signatures. Patients are being selected as we speak. We humans have the tendency, have the tendency to simplify, to make complex things understandable. But for some things, like understanding effective cancer treatment, we need to embrace that complexity, make sense of it, and make it useful. We need to build systems that empower us to process complex information to make sense of correlation with relevance. Thank you. <laughs>